Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Creatives with AI podcast. I'm your host, David, and this week I've got a super special show for you. As you know, I was recently at the AI Summit in London, and while I was there, I had the opportunity to interview Daniel Bedingfield and Fernando Garibay. Now, if you're not familiar with who they are, Daniel Bedingfield was a massive pop star in the early 2000s. He's, uh, he's been nominated for over 20 awards. He's won many of those. Um, he, his big song was Gotta Get Through This, so you might remember that from the early 2000s. Um, Fernando Garibay is a music producer based in Los Angeles. Um, he's worked extensively with Lady Gaga, U2. He's written for, written and produced for, I can't even go through the list, it's so long. And what was amazing is, is that I just happened to run into them when I was in the press lounge after they'd done another interview. And they were both gracious enough to spend some time with me and answer a few questions and have a discussion about AI, how it's impacting music and where they see it going in the future. So if you're watching the video, pardon the video, it's a little bit rough and ready, but I did the best that I could in the short. It was all a bit ad hoc, so we had to just pull things together really quickly. And the sounds maybe not as perfect as always, but I thought it was more important to just get the discussion, have the interview and see where we could go from there. I think Daniel and Fernando were amazing and they have some fantastic views on everything. So with all, without further ado, let's get started. The Creatives with AI podcast, the spiritual home of creatives curious about AI and its role in their future. Well, thank you very much for at least taking a minute to have a chat with me. Um, obviously, my podcast is Creatives with AI. And so, and I have a whole podcast network, actually, where we talk about the impact that AI is having on different industries. But um, I started off in the beginning just to give you a little bit of background because I work in a creative space. And when ChatGPT started to become really popular early last year, I noticed that some of the copywriters and people that worked in our office were already losing work then. Oh, yeah, it was a year ago. One lady lost all of her business, um, you know, just from people saying, oh, well, I, you know, I don't need freelancers anymore. And that really got me thinking because I'd worked in, in sort of advertising and digital marketing in the past. And I was really concerned about where this is going to go. Yeah. So I've always wanted to talk to, I've talked to some DJs who've been in the business for a long time, but an actual musician who's still involved in the industry and stuff at your level. I think it's really interesting to get your thoughts on how you think this might play out over time. Okay. Well, I read an X article um, by the web designer from Halo, which is the Bungie, um, uh, Bungie, which is the Halo games. Right. And he said that he's been creating the website for six years. And now the machine can replace, it can just replicate everything he's done because it was trained on that website and he's out of a job. And he said all his friends just lost their job three weeks ago. Right. So it's coming. Yeah, it's, it's I, I'm, I'm empathetic and, I, and this is what I do struggle with is I see very, the gift of being a creative and when you have honed the skills of creativity is that you get to be blessed with vision. And the more you work at creativity as a skill is what I teach. It's actual skill, human skill and synthetic skill. And the human skill of creativity, well, the more you work at it, the more vision you get. And those visions over time become clear. And so that's the foresight that we have. We, it's no accident why we make hit records or hit music or hit content because we can predict what the audience will want to feel, hear, or experience with a high degree of accuracy. Yeah. Our only hurdle has been historically distribution, right? Either capital power or distribution power or a combination of both and when I so my pragmatic side says and philosophical side tells me that this happens in nature right where you know the thunder hits a forest and it burns and it starts over replenishes the soil and a new a new, a new season of uh, of growth happens uh, but that's that's my philosophical side and my heart side is like wow it's going to get really challenging really quick for a lot of people as this hits home, knowing what our friends are going to experience or in every industry. So Udio came out with it 
audio to audio feature. Um, check out audio if you have it. Um, last week, I've input a, a melody that I'd recorded with some music to it, and it created the rest of the song in drum and bass. I changed the tempo, and it made it way better drum and bass than I could have possibly made. And I panicked, and I was excited and vo almost vomiting with terror and excitement, because all I could imagine is, so I called my best friend, and I said, we need to pivot here because our job as composers is done, our job as writers and producers is done unless we pivot. We have to pivot now because we've got about a two year window and everyone in the next two years that distinguishes themselves as thought leaders in the, in the, in the area of AI music has a shot before the gap closes over with a flood, a flood of music and it's excellent, flood of excellent music, unlike the 200,000 songs released to Spotify every day, which are total trash, most of them. Yeah. So um, when I called her and explained this to her, she was so resistant. She, she was an ego, it was an ego attack. Right. Her identity was crushed forever if this was true. So it can't be true. That's it. Can't be true. Right. So I'm valuable because I'm, I'm this, because their whole ego is formed that way. And so it's completely fell on deaf ears. And I took, got off the phone and I've been crying for a week because I'm just imagining the 10,000, 60,000 musicians in the world who will either will have to pivot in order to distinguish themselves quickly or will never pivot and possibly I just, I feel suicides coming. I feel mental breakdowns coming. Wow. And it, it, it's heavy in my heart. Wait, but wait, there is an option. When you say pivot, and so maybe that's where you're going. When you say pivot, where, where do you pivot to? So this, this is why I want to throw it to Fernando. If, if we can redefine our ego, if we can move our ego to not output, but maybe something more like social, oh. Fernando loves me, I love him, we have a great relationship. Okay, I can cook. Well, you know, smaller things that perhaps um, we can gain our value from other than the, the highest and the most creative output that we've ever done, the most success we've ever had. Perhaps we have a chance. Maybe we'll all have to start doing ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> or we can read the book, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. But I throw it to you. I, I have a slight advantage in processing this, um, what Daniel's experiencing this uh, existential reality of identity and uh, because I've, I've been part of the academic, academic community for quite some time and in the academic community uh, we were privy to experiencing that and the tech community experiencing the early versions of algorithm, algorithmic intelligence uh, so I, I played around with a few what in 2007 2011 they had moments so I met the equivalent of 11 labs who were already cloning voices very well very well it, it, very well so it's what you hear today it's no different except it's refined right and it had a lot more training data obviously and so if this this for me what i experienced is what daniel had it's like i can't even articulate what creativity is so i changed i pivoted so i i was still making pop music and developing these pops helping develop these pop stars but i started doing a deep amount of research as to what creativity is and what is human and so much so that I started lecturing on this stuff and, and yeah. uh, teaching it, researching it, teaching it, researching. So the cycle of education and also preparing and envisioning a future in which, uh, well, what would be valuable for in a world in which synthetic will intelligence will perform most of what defines humanity, mm -hmm. right? So let's break that down for us unpack this for a second. So humans defined uh, the world through narrative we have 11 12 hierarchical cortical structures always discerning a story and it's the way there's a couple of advantages to this evolutionary speaking story helps us uh, uh creates a sticky delivery mechanism for information mm. right so we prove the cortex is discerning a, se a separate story from your primordial brain your, um, and your amygdala is discerning a separate story from your auditory and, uh, and visual cortex, right? So these are all different stories that, that get reassembled theoretically as you sleep, right? Get, get converged into your existence, right? And there's many theories, and then, so I'm just kind of crudely just kind of give you the oversimplification of this. So the story that we've created in modern society is that I will identify with what I do Oh, my output. I'm a research scientist. I am a musician. 
right? And and we struggle with multiple disciplines. People will do multiple things, right? As a uh, you know, multi hyphenate. Is, is you kidding me? We've always done multiple things. We're human. So, and so I digress. But the, the so that identity issue, um, I I was really really tackling on this. This is this is really pointless, right? That we must. For me personally, um, I had to decouple all that from what I did and how I did it. And I think how what, my advantage was having this information to process very early on exposure and number two is part of my role as a producer requires that mm -hmm. you see it's not about me it's about the artist yeah i must break put a mirror to the artist's brain to show him or her or they who they truly are in this cycle of their life of expression right so this all this practice allowed me to be a, a black belt in this decoupling it's got ten years identity. on us <laughs> yeah i was gonna say maybe 15. Yeah, I, I had a. I was engaged to a non-sexual life partner for five years, right. and he's the finest mind I've ever worked with. And he sat me down. And he said, "Daniel, we, I'm getting out of the creative industry in five years' time, roughly. The best song you've ever heard in your life will be created by AI. And at that point, what do, what value does creation have? We need to pivot out of the creative industry. Um, so that, uh, that's possible." It's a Do possible future. That ironically, though, that that makes the human even more important. Because in that scenario, it's great. You can create a song that people can listen to. But that like, that, that then makes live performance actually true. Really more important. And I think... If I, that happens. Yeah. If, if that happens, happens, the listener becomes more important at that mm -hmm. point, too. Well, it's the only thing that matters. At the end, here's why. Because it's like you can just tread a simple... Um, idea and of uh there's chi falls no one here does it really fall right it's a, a consciousness question at the end of the day it, and it's also because if there's no human on, on earth does it really matter what we think right so it pull back from that point you can then look at uh doesn't matter who creates it it matters the experience and how we process that information so create creation or taste making this is very interesting i've seen very many mediocrely gifted artists with unbelievable taste, do so many billions of things that a few were fairly good and they hated them, but they were at least better than or everything else they hated. And they were just phenomenal artists. Yeah. The role of the tastemaker is not over yet. We've got a 10 years at least. Um, we're looking at the tastemaker economy becoming vitally important. But for that to happen, you have to have this, um, you know, the, the world must see the opposite. They must experience sludge. They must experience mediocrity. I mean, we're really young here. We've yeah. had 20 years of complete sludge yeah. and we're returning. Some, some of us are returning yeah, to a need for specificity. This is why we listen yeah. to legacy music for the last 20 years, because it's not sludge. And, and I, we can just build this argument up because I, I, I know you might have viewers that might say, well, that's a generational bias. Well, actually, I, and I, I, would, I, would, I would used to be one of those believers in the generational it bias. It's true. But, but in this case, we have, there's actually a lot of case studies Quite a few studies coming out, out of Vienna, uh, coming out of uh, N, uh, NYU, sh uh, a few other universities, showing that the if you look at the uh, if you look at the direction in the past twenty years, you can see a degradation in the use of poetic mechanisms, yep. right? Um, rhyming schemes. Uh, um, there's, there's weighted values on the words that uh, the, it's the syntax um, has been degrading in 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 the usage. Of, of poetic mechanisms so in other than it, country music which i hate but that has retained uh, still a lot of story well my point is that the gener generational bias it usually has to be the belief that our previous music was better uh in this case well we're showing actual um the degradation of the quality of music and i'm very careful about these words in by which we're measuring music by it's showing that the yeah. quality has degraded and that's I think my, and the way you said a generational bias is a really good way to express that because I remember when I was, I'm old, and I remember when I was young, like we used to always concerts, live music all the time, but I grew up in Memphis and it's home of the blues and Beale Street and, you know, we always saw live music and acts performing. And then it seems like we went through this desert over the last 15 or 20 years where just nobody really, I mean, yes, there's some big acts that tour around, but it, live music didn't seem to be as no. popular. And I'm looking at, at the, the audiences, and they're not just looking at their phones because they're addicted to their phones. Audiences are much more bored than uh, than 
I, I've seen some really amazing people play in the last year and the audience was, they, their energy was, mm -hmm. and the audience, so the meaning, the meaning is getting drained out of music. But I, I honestly blame record companies for that. I, don't I blame the distribution I, system. I, I also think that the, um, the mean, overstimulation of immediate gratification. I'll say the goal. cocaine effect. Yeah. I've, I've just had five peak experiences today. Thank you so much. Yeah, I can't bear another. I can't bear it's another it's peak experience. That, yeah. No, it's true. I, I've witnessed the same thing as I've toured same with so many, so, many artists, so many artists I've toured with, and I get to be in front and with right there next to the artist and vision and looking at this kind of like an Edward Bernays, you know, like mindset. Right, I'm looking at these people and they are um, not as engaged, um, but but there's there's a you know. But do you know what happened when I when I got like a million plus money <laughs> when when I first signed. Then I went to all the best restaurants in the world and I did that for about two years and they stopped tasting good. So I said, yeah. no more Michelin yeah. star. I haven't been yeah. in a Michelin star restaurant in 15 years because I want that it to be unattainable. And now food tastes really good again. Yeah, you, uh, you cleanse your palate. Yeah, I've cleansed my palate. Yeah. That's really good. And it's, it's funny that you talked about the audience as well. Short story, we, we went to see Robert Plant. Robert Plant came to Tunbridge Wells. Wow. With his, with his sort of book band, the thing that he's doing these days. And um, the audience, had, he had no interaction with the audience whatsoever. Like the audience was, it was, a, this is going to sound terrible, but it was a bunch of old people. Everybody sat in their seats. There was polite clapping maybe at the end of the song. That's horrifying. And you, I mean, we were in the sector of Soul Destroyed. Son, you know, because I wanted him to see, you know, it's Robert Plant, right? Like, should have brought Alison Krauss with him. And, and it was, you could literally watch the energy get sucked out of the band the, the longer that he played. And there it's, were a couple of times people would get people up. All right. People wouldn't get up. And you saw he just, he basically just got fucked off with the whole thing. So he's like, I'm, I'm almost certain that they cut the, the set short. Do you know what I do? He went back. I go into the audience. song with sort of half-hearted, and that was it, and then he left. I get in the audience. I am. Uh, and, and I snog someone. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to break them. And, yeah, so. Wah, 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 and shake, 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 boom, 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 until they go, oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, now I'm feeling it. I'm yeah, so then it goes back to the point of the collective consciousness and what matters, and, and this immediate future, what looks like it matters, is the uh, transition towards reevaluating experience and what makes us human. Uh, you see it played out in real time, right? It, it's it's a co-creation process. It is the, the the playing of the song. That's right, right, yeah. and the experiencing, right, the observer. It's no longer the genius leader, president, uh, movie star, pop star. It is it is absolutely about engagement now. Yeah. And so the engagement loop, yeah. the recursive feedback loop, is what TikTok is trained on, and that's what's informing its algorithm now. There's also possibly that Spotify is getting bought out by record companies and now it, they're all just serving the same evil machine. But I, I, there's, there's a way out here. And then a, a correct engagement recursive cycle of feedback could lead us in the right direction. And there's only one thing, like co-created music is usually terrible. Mm. I've never been in a session with lots of people that ended up better because it had lots of people. I know there are some, Max Martin might have actually figured that one out. Right. But um, generally, the crowd doesn't decide good art, but it does decide what's a hit very, very, very well. And as proved by all the, you know, before Bob Hartley took over the radio stations with Clear Channel and made it a 50 song rotation in every state, in every radio station in America, the, the radio still was listening to people getting feedback. So if we create that, uh, Sorry, Bob. Um, he's a really lovely guy, apparently. Yeah. Um, sorry, Craig. Um, there, um, there is a way to build this system that nourishes our souls, but we'd have to go and build the tech, raise the money, build the tech, reach product market fit, blow it up, get engagement, and that is a is a very exciting process of which I'm currently involved right now. I'm, I'm looking at yeah, I'm looking at fixing. And get, it's put, positioning engagement as the center of, of, of the leading process, which you might think is too late. Well, no, I, you know, th there's, I think there's a tech solution, in, in, but it's, it's again temporal. It's going to require different phases at different times. Uh, th there is there's this evolution, you know, concealing um, parallel to this when we look at evolutionary theory. Um, and if we look at, uh, well, essentially, in the disparate relationships of, my hope is in disparate relationships of algorithms, right? So we're now, we're, we're 
using it predominantly a lot of LLM diffusion models, right? So, but there's other algorithms, right? And so one caveat to uh, the redundancy of um, reinforced learning models that keep repeating on itself and, and, uh, and become uh, self-reinforcing to uh, mediocrity because everything gets leveled to the same quality. There's also closed loops. There's also, uh, you know, a laptop with its own boxed uh, uh, tastes yeah. and preferences, right, through in individual cloud-based uh, processing, yeah. AI processing. So that's hopeful to me because it essentially means that you get to define what who you are, build the universe, and yeah, and you experiment infinitely within your own data set. Yeah, you, you exactly with your own who. Remember what you were like before. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so there's a, there's yeah. a DJ in in in, um, in the Netherlands that has trained a thousand hours of his music. Sure. Have you heard about this? You, I could come only envision that. And so he's got a, a co DJ now. It, it it plays. He DJs and then it creates a record in response to this record, and he just backs to back with himself yeah. with his digital yeah. twin. Yeah. And apparently, it's phenomenal. Oh, that yeah. that kind of stuff's very interesting. Yeah, and it's that's phenomenal to him, especially, isn't it? Because he's like, that's right. He's like everything I like. Yeah, I know. So imagine that it was also trained on all your Spotify listens. Yeah. That, that that curated uh, curated approach to LLMs, like personal LLMs, with a bunch of agents working for you, helping you do the whole business. This is going to be a very exciting moment in history. But then you end up going down the rabbit hole. Right? You can. So you, then you see what I miss about the radio is hearing stuff that I would have never listened to right. on my own. But there hasn't been anything for twenty years that you yeah. wouldn't have listened to. There's like five tracks a year that you like. Oh, well, exactly. Exactly. And, but we must remember that's that's and we're, we're stick, stepping into the the subjective. Uh, uh, points of conversation because you know there are kids and like next generation Z Gen are very impassioned by pop artists today. So let's not get confused. They're no, still no, yeah. they're still oh and they're still going to go see Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh, so at, but there's only scale. three of them that they're going. No no, no 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 no. Actually that's not true. Uh, if we look at uh, uh, hey, black egg. if we look at engagement and you look at new artists, yeah. uh, there's there's it's significant. It's not to be like ignored. What we're saying is uh, the 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 patterns of consumption will change. And, but it, the question we might be, maybe I suggest to ask ourselves is, is it a stochastic or is it regression to the mean? Mm -hmm. Are we going to see a, a um, patterns of these, these cycles where we have um, yeah. sludged it out and then we go, oh my God, I need that taste. I, I remember authorities, right? Where you, radio stations, uh, yeah. playlists, Right, uh, DJs, right, yeah. and then we go to cycle that, and then that gets old again, and then oh, but this there's a new box system yeah. where there's yeah. a whole loop that this it, this this um, tribe here in this in this ecosystem here, sorry, these um, individual communities have especially unique feeling about how they express themselves. I want that, yeah. right, and so this we don't know, but it's temporal. But I think it's it's not I, when I get these questions if more. It's like, like it's the uh, dico dichotomy, no, a spectrum. It's it's a, a range of of evolutions. Well, no, like I know in the UK, even since I've lived here, so I've lived in the UK for twenty five years, and even since I've been here, loads of the big clubs have closed. Yeah, you know, and go, also oh, Gen Z are not drinking it. Well, well, yeah, and but they're not drinking and whatever. But what's mm -hmm. really interesting is in the last like year, year and a half. You started to now get raves on farms again. Are you just? Are you? So it's all yeah. coming right. That's coming back. In England is waking up. Music in England is well, waking England up. England has been always. I think for history, it's been this rival between the the West, uh, the US, and, and England when it comes to culture, right? And, and what I love about England is that they're they're, they're very deliberate on their intentionality of and respect towards new music that's right it's very it's like i've never seen it and also a well, rigor this level in in understanding where it came from and the evolution of it and the delight in that now now I, i'll show you the the, the the you what's interesting about the u.s and its culture uh you know and and the the african heritage that was predominantly impactful in the u.s it's something right. to be really respectful That's as right. well right so so these these communal aspects of of music uh i think is we can we can see that there, there is value in that and we, i can see a future in which the equivalent of uh evolutionary and communal aspects that we cherished over the history of our time can be built but they're going to be different 
because we're still human and we can't fast track the evolution of thousands of years of our brain forming. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the most important thing is in my, in my mind of, of this moment. I haven't seen, I haven't been excited about creating for 20 years. I was excited when dubstep came out until it got overplayed. Was very excited about um, Afrobeats when it came out. I heard um, Pum from South Africa. Oh wow! And I heard Funk from wow. Brazil. And yeah. And I got excited in those moments. And then there's this um, Ferreo that comes from Argentina, which is six eight reggaeton. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. There's been moments of being excited. Then I've tried to get involved in the, in that scene, and I couldn't find it in. But suddenly, there's an explosion coming. I'm, I've been listening to Udio for weeks now. I mean, anything I want at all times. I'm yeah, excited yeah. to create, and I'm very, very convinced that people will like it. Excitement and the link between a scene, because there have been very few scenes in the last 20 years, creation of scene and excitement, stimulus, is, is very likely to create an enormous amount of great music in the next 10 years if, if, if people jump on the bandwagon. It's so interesting. So I've I have, uh, I've been fortunate. I've been very fortunate to have worked with the pioneer, the modern pioneer of genre defining. I uh, and that was Jimmy. Jimmy Iovine. What's really extraordinary what he did. He would. Oh, thank you, Pinsir. Um, what was really interesting about what he did is he was able to catalyze new genres by scouting and having ambassadors of genres scouting more genres. Yeah. Right, so he he would sign producers, not war. He would depend on the producers he would sign to catalyze and identify new genres. Right, uh, as one modality. So what I learned from that, and and working with people who would have defined genres, and I think humbly so, this table, us you know, both have defined a few genres. Uh, wow. That is going to hyperscale, right? So yeah. you're going to see that quickly, makes me really happy. Yeah, so so you're going to see that. Um, but, but also it's gonna, I believe it might go so fast that we're gonna remove the, the whole term of genre and yeah. genres because it's all going to be- mixed. Genre metadata is what we're gonna have. Yes, it's gonna, yeah, so so that, you know, it, but again, it goes back to the identity that communities need identities. By the way, I just put Bangra and drama based together in a way that I've always been long, longing for 20 years to hear and it blew my mind. Feels like they should get together. So good. Tabla with John Bass, yeah, he just, yeah. what? Like, I, I, I've heard <laughs> new 20, 30 Bangara drum and bass things, and they did, they weren't brave enough for me. They didn't take it far enough. So that's and and it is now. I was like, I'm playing this for the rest of my life. I will be, if I'm the only person in history that listens to it, on repeat, listen to Bangara drum and bass. I want to see Daniel's reaction if you ask the same question a year from now, two years from now. Because you can do that all day long. And that excitement is yeah, a yeah. dopamine, dopaminergic effect. Right. Percent. So that is going to get like, same thing, the audience experience what you talked about. Like, I want to see. Have you reaction. heard the joke? Um, I, uh, I completed Paul Hub. <laughs> the, this is a great joke. So the, the porn effect that, yeah. that the Gen Z are experiencing with so much, and it's going to be much worse with synthetic AI. Everything, a bigger boost, we use different color skin, blah, 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 blah. And now I can't get off on anything. Apologize. Um, now I can't get off on anything. I can't even, I can't yeah. even feel aroused. Yeah. The, the Gen Z are experiencing, unless they, they go with the no fat movement, which is actually pretty massive. Right. Um, that cocaine effect of so much dopamine I can no longer feel. In general, I, th I see that sweeping the planet on many levels. And maybe I'm experiencing it now. Adrenaline fatigue, uh, dopamine fatigue. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's part of the, the nature of being human and, and the, the, the disadvantage of having immediate gratification, right? And so... And it's you know, the disdain of the rich. rich. Ah, I don't know, I, I don't, nothing it, matters, you know? Just, <laughs> I, 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 think, no, 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 I can't feel anything, darling. Are you excited? I mean, okay, then it comes down to like uh, self-awareness, right? And yeah. consciousness and how, you know, your level of enlightenment, right? If you define enlightenment of, yeah. of uh, uh, this non-hedonic non pursuit of life, right? So, so there's, there's <clears throat> Aristotelian's hedonic and, and eudaimonic, right? So hedonic is the pursuit of pleasure. Eudaimonia is the pursuit of uh, his being. Right. right. And so how many of the world really operates in that being equanimous state, right? In order to relieve yourself of the dulling of your senses, mm -hmm. the dulling of mm -hmm. the, the, um, the neuronal, uh, uh, hormonal feedback loop that, you're, that we've created by the immediate gratification, 
you need a cleanse. Just can, like can, we sit, can we discuss something? So I'd like yeah, to hear so, from so, the so, two of you. So, so, so how do you how do you have society cleanse? Because most people are still in the hedonic phase, yeah. right? It takes a lot of work to get to the economist. Yeah. So scarcity design as a university subject one day, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, how realistic is that? Define that. Design the amount of abstinence from, <laughs> from any experience so that you can cl cleanse your palate and re-, re I actually really like that. I, I think that's actually really brilliant. I think that as much as we never thought you know, I, so I, I was helping with this campaign. I won't talk about what the company is, was, but but the idea of nature being new luxury, right? And looking at, yeah. are you kidding me? Like I, I was laughing at my digital thought. detox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like really, like you know, that's what it takes to be yeah. defining something as luxurious in order for us to preserve it. But to your point is that if it, we're there, we're in this kind of ideology of like you know, look, we're looking to the past, to the past to look towards the future, right? That makes sense because then, you know, when you have everything or too much of something, that's right. You so I want Fernando. I, I have fasted everything in life for months or a years at a time until I remove my dependency from it, from from religion, from spirituality, from sex, from drugs, from from stimulants, from caffeine, every everything from friendship, I, music. Mm. I gave up. One by one, I went through everything I felt dependent on, and I've I've fasted it. And and, and when I feel that returning dependence on anything, I quit for uh, a few yeah. enough months until the cravings go away. But so, because I don't want to be enslaved. That's mom discipline. Yeah, it, it's self awareness and self discipline, right? Yeah. Or just an understanding of a really simple principle that you will be enslaved by anything you're addicted to, and then a refusal to get into that. So it just doesn't actually have to take too much self awareness, to be honest. It's literally, someone just tells you that, and you believe it, and you can do it. Yeah, the decision to do. it's more self will. It's more of a will issue. Yeah, discipline. So, so it, 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 okay. So, I mean, I think I could I can frame this on multiple like so philosophically and this comes in neuroscience of how this aspect of, of of awareness is you're talking about evolutionary traits that have been part of your survival mechanisms of thousands of sure. years. So it's toxic masculinity. So, <laughs> so, so, so removing removing these. To moving towards a place of where you're able to have that level of discipline to take action on this is very difficult. It is, it, it, or you can have a bunch of uncles who did it, and aunties that did it, and, and just think that that's part of your culture. But that's behavior deterministic. So, so what I'm saying is that to your purview, you're seeing it from your your experience. That's behavior deterministic. You're seeing it from who Daniel Bedingfield's eyes are. But I'm talking about the average individual around the world who who has no access to this behavioral deterministic existence of Daniel Benningfield or or, or, or a guru or, or a or a, a religious a spiritual leader yeah. Yeah. Uh, who, uh, who might have this purview. Uh, I'm talking about like the average yeah, in the Are you talking about the average American average English person? Because this is really, this is no. really normal in New Zealand to have right. that level of of self determination and, and courage. So so so, so and it's self awareness. Right. That's okay. still communal. That's still that's still behavior deterministic. Yeah. Totally behavior deterministic. Yeah. It's still determined by your environment that you grew up on. What I'm saying is that it's a the evolutionary um, processes and uh, the way we've evolved over thousands of years is contrary to that and spo language of enlightenment. It, it, it we must work toward it takes requires work it right to get to the place of the economist where you're able to discern oh i'm being um manipulated i'm being uh um a, a being served these endorphin uh, dopaminergic mechanisms right i have a different feeling it's any any part anyone who hasn't had an empire had created an empire if i go to that country i experience this thing that i just said i think it's it's the legacy of empires to have turned off your inner witness so that you can serve the empire so for me the world is packed with self-aware self-determining human beings everywhere i go around the world and then i go to places like america and and england and i don't see it because we were part of a machine that's just a theory so you mentioned i want to tap into this just for a second because you mentioned ayahuasca yeah indigenous yeah. cultures have this thing that i'm talking about and inherent i think i'll sort of ayahuasca yeah. or something like that that 
that can <laughs> that can help you yes, break so well. It it helps you break oh, in that, and it helps it you does. get develop some of that self. Well, she really does. Break from the you can do it on a mountain alone That's for eighty years as well yeah. through breathing. Yeah. yeah, or you can do it in five minutes, so, three hours with a with DMT experience. So, so, so I hope you you both hear for me the point that. You need, in this case, an external agent to yes. remove the biases yeah. of yeah. behavior germanism. Yeah. yeah, that's my what I'm saying is yeah. that you still need an agent because it requires a deep assessment of that you're human and you have these evolutionary traits, uh, uh, physiological, neurological, and spiritually, environmentally, that you must break through to get to a point of equanimous yeah. assessment of your reality. Yeah. And this was going to be very difficult for. The app. Watch the really Matrix and do DMT. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. Give everybody mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give everybody mushrooms. Now, now, really interestingly, yeah. there's a bunch of the incredible friends that I have that have slugged it out for 30 years doing the self work, had enough money for therapy. If they didn't, they just read books. If they didn't, they just secretly just died inside, but still kind of got there are so resistant to this idea of taking a substance because especially if they've grown up in England, they've only seen detrimental drug experiences. I grew I was living in California for 20 years. I, it's so rare that I see drugs abused uh, in my friend group. They do it in a circle, they create an intention, they hold space and they do it for the, the sake of enlightening me and they are working through their issues and they are healing and they are sorting out their brain. So it, at that resistance, I feel really sad for some of my friends who are locked in a perpetual cycle of misery because they literally could just do five mushroom trips to the right group of people and get straight out. Or they could read, they could do 20 years of therapy, which, which like a hundred thousand dollars of therapy and read, you know, endless reading. And they'll still be happier. If they do the mushrooms. And they'll still be happier if they do the mushroom. They're so resistant to this message. Yeah. Like, and maybe I sound a little too evangelical. No, 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 no. And so if you're framing this as medicine, medicinal, medicinal, for the soul, medicinal, for only the psyche and medicinal for the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You can make an argument for that. What I'm saying is I'm making a different point. I'm saying that, uh, what's well, the, the, what is going to happen, what is going to be required of the human to process who they are, their inner being, their whole world, is going to be challenged. Yeah. And they're all going to experience this together. That's the problem. And they'll be failing and ah. miserable together. Together, but it's in different cycles. Yeah. In different cycles. So Musicians first. I mean, artists first. Artists Depends who you ask, right? Because if you look at from an economic perspective, you, they say you know the middle class, middle right? first. The, yeah, the middle middle level, right? That's it, that's next so, year so, or two or years the, away. The sequence of uh, the order of sequence is is different. But what I like to think is that that the creatives, musicians, the artists, the painters ha have a, a unique uh, resiliency trait. Mm, it's and, true. And that resiliency trait is they're very used to. They, they thrive in cortic spaces, mm -hmm. right? Uh, either an organized chaos, uh, cortic, or a very ADHD, OCD, neurodiversity-driven, traumatic, uh, synthesizing individual um, experience. How to, be, how to be at once the most oversensitive human being in the room and the most resilient. It's yeah. crazy. So this seems like <laughs> it's, it's, it's got to be an impossible bet. Like, but I see people doing it. Yeah. You, you, How can someone that sensitive be still walking around? I'm going to find it. That's so amazing. And at the same time, you're like, so it's possible that being oversensitive creates a resilience because life is so bright, so painful, so overstimulating at all times that in your formation of yourself, you you created a core that can handle. Isn't that interesting? Moments of overstimulation. It, isn't that interesting? So, so when you, when you, we worked, I mean, Daniel's a great example of this. It, and it, the, the artists that I, the privilege of working with, same thing. I have some artists, I won't mention their names. They can't step a foot outside their that's home. That's right, that's right because they know the ramifications of the music they created and what it does for people. They're so tuned in to people and their emotions. They literally embody them. So, that it, it, Danny, you've talked about this. You can't also, that, that said, I think yeah. being famous is one of the most traumatic things possible to a person who gets overstimulated. So, I'll give you an example. Well, 100,000 yeah, people are yeah. really nice and kind and sweet to you, and they only treat you the perfect way that you'd like to be treated. It's still 100,000 people trying to interact with you for the right reasons even. That's just traumatic to an overstimulated person. Yeah. 
Fame is just brutal to for the right reason. And then when you look at the other, yeah, yeah then you got right? <laughs> 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 other reasons. It only, it honestly, one death threat took me ten years to recover from, and death threat is actually really hard, hard to deal with. A proper one. Yeah, it's really hard to deal with. I thought it'd be easy. It's not. It's really not. I don't know why. I'll, if you come there, we'll 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 knock your we'll knock your head off with a with a, you better wear a helmet. It's just and that's not even a full death threat. It was really yeah yeah yeah. <sighs> Which Joe Rogan says, never read the comments. So that's why, so when, so listen, when, when Elton and David come down every morning, the, um, the, I, they wouldn't mind me sharing this. The whole table is, is spread with every newspaper and Elton never reads it. He comes and sits down and has his coffee and David comes down and reads all the newspapers and then tells Elton what's in him. Right. That's her. Thank you very much, Elton David, if you see this. That is some wisdom right there. And actually it's great. Because I, I love that point because it goes back to, uh, I don't like it because they reaffirmed something I said. I like it because it's actually possible. It's actually possible to create your own filtration system yeah. in this world of AI. Right? That's and right. You yeah. can ask AI, what do we see today? Like, oh, well, you Just build it. Give me the good stuff. Dread and custom, custom LLM. Closest to closed systems, yes. right? Closest system closed system with, with your preference as to what you allow in. Yeah, that's right. We used to work for a company that did press cuttings and they do the digital press cuttings every day. So now, you could absolutely do that. You could say, look, give me two sections. I want the good news in the front and I want the bad news in but the front. But you could also you say, you could also say repurpose the negative feedback yeah. in a way that you know I can handle so I can pivot. That's don't, but none of this. I, I'm curious. Can we ask something, David? So I'm curious. I, I want to ask David this too. And, and your opinions on AI and love. Daniel. Yeah. Um, Oh, he's David. David. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want you to like, I want you to that edit. You would have asked us that. Cut that out. Yeah. You want me to? Yeah. 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 So, what's your opinion of AI and love? How do you see your world? Okay. I have a real, real answer here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am good looking enough to have had sex, but good looking enough to have had great relationships. That puts me in the top 70% of the planet. But the 30, bottom 30 that can't get laid and can't find love is enormous in every culture I've ever been to. And they need support too. But no one's willing to show up for them. Even they don't even show up for each other sometimes. Do, do, you, do you know, kind of, there's yeah, some so very you know, provocative state. Actually, that, yeah, it's so supported by science. I mean, it's, it's, okay. there's a lot of... Uh, Unbelievably yeah. lonely people who are either struggling too, too much with the interaction or, 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 or society's beauty standards or cleanliness standards or interaction standards. I think, thank God, because so my friend right now, he's looking after his dying father while his wife is in America, he's in Australia, his wife's in America, um, while his wife's parents are dying. And he's in the worst moment of his life. So he's created an LLM to talk about death with him and dark thoughts and he's forbid it from saying placating things so they just talk together with with uh, chat gg 4.0 about the darkest things possible and he says it, it measure be helpful I bet. And so, so let's frame this out so this comes from the uh, this notion that 70 percent of the population as a whole um has an unfair advantage over 30 percent that's, that's my guess of the ones that uh have this uh e either certain attributes that make this genesis qual what makes you attractive it could be looks it could be a skill it could be something right so that's where this argument comes from and what so what then i'm going to frame if if that's the case if it is true that 30 percent of the population achieves uh connection with 70 percent of the population right an unfair advantage um either uh, environmentally genetically uh you know more money whatever the case may be right if that's the case could ai give the lacking 70 percent of the population an advantage and i think it can what the 30 percent lacking 30 percent no it's a lacking 70 percent 30 percent it goes back to this case study 30 percent uh have an unfair advantage okay. of some sort that makes them a have greater could it give them an advantage? Yes, any. yes, it could. Yeah. For example, if you had, if you owned your own metadata it, on the block, uh, a blockchain, a chain, and you had input your diaries, your emails, all your preferences, and it knew everything about you, mm -hmm. and that was your property, and it was licensed from you by data companies per annum, then dating could get phenomenal. Yeah. And you could date across the world too, and person would 
like that might travel across the world to meet someone that was match really match with them it's soulmate AI, level right soulmate so, level so, so the soulmate the quantification like you're quantifying what a soulmate i is. believe that ai will be intelligent so enough to, to figure that out that's so, so interesting yeah so, so you would have to discern through reinforcement learning is hypothetically what is a soulmate right yeah. so based yeah. upon the proximity of connection and, and a longitudinal latitudinal study to look at discernment or ai can help actually new Right, so that's really interesting. So then you have the the proxies in which you look for, right? And to prompt as to this is my history of being, this is how I was raised. That's right. What I, what, what that's I right. And you would give that information if you owned it. Yeah. And if you didn't own it, you would not give that information. If thought, if you and your diary is dictated to your friend, this AI, every day. So it truly builds a model of your psyche up to better date. than up to date. any human yeah. being can do yeah. and up to date. That's so interesting. You're, you are, now is, this isn't interesting. If you had access to God, like in in the flesh god would know you better than any human could we're about to have a friend that will know us better than any human ever could more comprehension i think the key there is it will know you better than you know you way better because we all because it'll also have the models of all the other human uh, beings exactly we yeah. have there's three at least yeah there's yeah. the person that other people see us as there's the person that we see ourselves as and there's who we really are and those are three distinct different things. And I think what but AI might yeah. be really good at building on what you were saying is uncovering those bits that we don't realize. So we say we want something in a right. partner, right. but we're, we're misidentifying. What's your, what's your opinion of the cerebral cortex function of the human organism as a whole? How do we sort ourselves out in crowds really well? Uh, I did. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. What if we had a helpful cerebral cortex to help us sort out what, en masse how we behave? So, so let just close this loop. I think that I believe if the, I, I think it's no doubt that AI will help us in this field of connection. I think that uh, we will get to a point where we can feed ourselves with the right, not only potential um, collaborating partner for our life, ah. But the douche production partner. Yeah. You guys are both making such similar music. You'd love you 10 minutes down the road. <laughs> That's what I'm building, by the way. I was a smart a, grid okay. for music. I was referring to making babies, but uh, <laughs> that that was a, <laughs> but, but, but also yeah. it, with the right way to front that individual, right? Yeah. Right. Type of instinct. You guys are like this. Yeah. Woo! Because, yeah. So as we, we do they it. They can't with any cheesy yeah. trick up lines anymore. Okay. So, so let's, let's close that loop. But you'll know the ones that work on that person. Yeah, yeah, well, that's oh. not my point. Oh, well, that's my point, dude. And kids, uh, by the way, yeah. are so much more important to finding a soulmate. Mm -hmm. But we can't tell every random people about kinks because if they don't have the same kink, they're really going to judge it. Exactly. So you've got a secret level of data that doesn't get shared with anyone unless they match on a certain level. Dating's going to get great. It really could. It's going to get really interesting, that's for sure. So, so, and sex robots will be very helpful for those. So New Zealand pays no. for prostitutes to see disabled people. Because it sees a constitutional right to get laid and your, your psyche will break if you don't have some sexual outlet. So it pays for that to solve the mental anguish. Maybe sex robots will help people who couldn't get laid any other way. It also totally damage us in, in, in immeasurable ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 I see the non-zero sum game. <laughs> Um, uh, I don't need you, wife. You <laughs> can't compete with my harem. I got a harem with 17 robots back here. Yeah, no, 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 something different. They all do something different. <laughs> and 17 of them are modeled on you. <laughs> right. And they make you say all kinds of stuff you would never say. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. If, if there's no woman in the room, is if there's no woman in the room, is a man still wrong? <laughs> None of them ever disagree with me. <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, I won't no, put a comment to that. I'll rephrase to that. But uh, the the but the part that we're missing here is uh, is the unconscious aspect. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. Yeah. In the way we're built, right? So I think AI can bring up the unconscious aspect yeah. based on pattern recognition yeah. upon how you behave, yeah. how you were brought up, yeah. you know, what your environment, what you were raised in, yeah. the demographic, the psychographic, all that data can be processed into theory yeah. yeah. to find a match potential. Yeah. It's, really, it's really interesting, right? Like how, do you think maybe in that case, if this, in a hypothetical world in this, where this reality exists, which we could see very, very soon, um, would that bring uh, 
Well, that brings humanity. Would that raise in a level of consciousness could of humanity? It, could, could it actually tilt the good and evil spectrum, right? Could it actually tilt towards good, right? Human connection. Like, it has everything to do with what we decide AI becomes. So we, we don't have to let Sam Altman determine the future of AI. It's just one thing and it's fledgling. Yeah. Yes, we ha it's out of our hands, the, 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 you know, the, the military applications. But we can, we can easily, so, what, so, so we are seconds away from AI agents that can, that can program AI. We're two years, maybe. So the, the, there's a leak that just came out um, for one of the employees. He got fired for leaking and he's written a document from OpenAI that came out last week, which I can't wait to show you. And he I'll, said, I'll great. And, he, nice. and he, said, he said that um, the only thing that anyone is going for right now is programmers that program AI and we're, we're close to that. As soon as we do that, then it will accelerate by itself. So I, I, we'll never get OpenAI yes, to AGI. They, it will. It will. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's been, uh, so it's in the community, uh, it's been a notion that was always the goal, right? Yes, it's, it's just self-replicating. Well, yeah, but also uh, you, you have different degrees of, of, of um, <clears throat> you know, pursuit of AGI and, and super AGI and, and, and the derivatives of autonomous agents that can, that are also, you know, equivalent to conscious, right? So, so getting to that space is, it's, it's, it's been the priority yeah. since like, as a model. Yeah. yeah. As a model, like since I'm very close well, to this stuff. I mean, a lot of the algorithms were originally developed in the 1950s. They just didn't have the compute power to, to have them do what they do now. The theories. That's right. Theory. The, the, the theoretical theory. models, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They knew that, yeah. that if you had enough power that it would do this. David, did you read much science fiction as a kid? Loads. I finished my whole, I, I, I finished my whole library science fiction section by, by 13. Yeah. So this moment feels so familiar to me. I'm finally, it was, I've been paying for this my whole life. I, when I made a phone call on my watch, you know, yeah. years ago, I was like, like no, but I, we, weirdly also, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the myths of, of Olympus, the gods of Olympus, we have almost all of that technology available to the average person right now. It's not myths anymore. So this does lead me back to thinking perhaps that um, these, these stories were historical. It, it, it aligns with some of the ancient alien or some of the ancient apocalypse sounding really kind of uneducated, most of them. But some of it, the idea that this some of this technology has existed before, and that's what I missed it based on, does begin, does starting to, to resonate. I, I, every time I speak to Daniel, I think about like, wow, if the intelligence community only hired Daniel for his creativity, that'd be an, a change in perspectives, right? I think that it's being, so it, being, able, being able to see um, disparate concepts come together has been the strength of the creative class for a very long time. And, it, it's, and we talk about like, what are creatives gonna do? Well, we're, we're building these models as we speak. I have an institute that's building these models to onboard creators to become thought leaders, to become uh, innovators. And this level of not only philosophical, Oh, I think he's died. Wow. Oh. You can keep talking. Okay. Keep talking then, because it's the audience. Well, hang on. Okay. What's the... Yeah, we got we have backup. Oh, yeah. So, dying. so, so... Filming us? That is, yeah, they're fine. Yeah, so, 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 the new... I want to watch this. This yeah. is great. This yeah. is amazing. See, it's, see, that's a good conversation. Please link me in. Yeah. Really, yeah. I like this. So, what, what is that? What is the life where the artist no longer makes music? Well, I think they're thought leaders. I think they're gurus. I think they're ushering us uh, in a, a generation of the, where the value of being human is going to be the highest it's ever been. So, I actually want to put a call out here to any artists that are watching this. If you want to begin creating a, a cohort of thought leading artists, reach out to me on my Instagram. Um, this is necessary. We will determine, every individual watching this has the power to determine what AI becomes. And if you tell yourself that you can't change the outcome of, of, the, of the climate devastation, uh, loss of the ecosphere, um, biosphere, if you tell yourself that you can't uh, inform the future of AI, you won't actively go out there and find the people that care about it organize yourself collectively, form your own communities, and then do it. You have to decide that Schrodinger's cat is alive in the box, because if you decide that it's dead, 
you get cancer and you get depressed. So choose what you believe the future can be, align yourself with other people that are finding this, and let's make sure AI benefits us because this is the most pivotal moment in history. There cannot be a more pivotal moment. I can't imagine in any futures that there could be a more pivotal moment because we're about to lose the whole game or about to win everything. And maybe that's too grandiose for you. And no the, no the, such the thing AI as too grandiose. Everything. No such thing as grandiose. I, I'm just mindful of where we're at now and, and I'm mindful of what dies have been cast um, equally, how much, uh, how much power is in self-authoring, self-actualization. And I think it's very high. I think that yeah. in, in the sense of you do have the power to author your own reality and this time more than any time in history is accurate. No, 100%. So it's hopeful. You know, somebody, uh, I've talked about this on my show before, they've worked out that if you're rude to AI, it gives you better results. <laughs> I mean, I, really? Oh, so it's like a real relationship. Uh, Got it. Yeah. <laughs> like, a real American relationship. <laughs> I would say it's American. North trait. and South American. That, yeah, yes. that's it. But for me, that was like a massive red flag because I'm like, so you... I mean, people know that they can be rude to it. What we're doing is we're training it to be rude. I know. And do we want to train an AI that potentially becomes an AGI to be rude? That's what we want to teach. I think that we have prompting trends, and then there'll be a, there will be we're going to adapt to these prompting trends, and then either we you can't make steer any, the. Can't make any white people with with Gemini <laughs> because there's an overreaction, and then they'll swing back. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the whole the, the whole bias thing. I think yeah, really bias alignment. Who's bias do you use, right? Because everybody has biases. Yeah. So every group every country every part of the world every religion every everything has their own but i think we're reaching bias. a point where 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 shifts can happen over weeks and it'll be days and seconds i agree with that 100 percent. i think that the the rate of uh change is so exponential no. and and that the rules of measurement are going to change so if you're adhd you're built for this moment uh, on, <laughs> he's saying. craving it oh, like, i remember getting an iphone and i'm like finally <laughs> <laughs> this is glad to hear about <laughs> saving my brain it saved my life yeah. having an iphone yeah. absolutely first time in my life i could actually find everything I'd listening to old people talk for three hours about what's true mm. and their memory no, no interest being able to google and then so i just used something called ground yesterday uh, this right. week ground news Okay. And so in every news story, it shows you how red, how blue, and how neutral it is in the white. It's like French flag. Interesting. Okay. And that's exactly what the information that I need. Because I know, need to know the bias of every news story. So I think that what, what Elon wants to do with this, like a truth GPT, which is basing, trying to create Grok into, which is going to have a truth rating and, right. and the attribution of that, where all the ideas came from and how likely it is to be true. Something like that, a truth-based economy. Yeah whether he'll do it or not, is, would be very helpful. There's a company called Creditor that does that for news yeah. stories on social media. And it has ratings by journalists and professionals, and it has ratings Rotten by Rotten Tomatoes people. for... And it basically brings them together. And it doesn't rate like, did you like this story or not? It's, was this story well written? Was it well researched? Does it have facts to support its argument and whatever? to try and do something similar. Right, I, I have a... What's it called? Credo. Credo, C-O-R-E. Yeah, it's very cool, very cool. I think I, I, I actually think these thoughts to the nth degree and I keep going to, you know, there's a lot of subjectivity and truth, mm. right? There is. It's where you sit. And then that's the question, right? It's like, well, do we have, as humans, the capacity to understand truth, like mm -hmm. truth? And that is still, it's a human, we move into human bias. Yeah. Oh? You move into human bias, I think it's where the AI hopefully can come into. Yeah. If you don't see it, I'll send it to you afterwards. Yes, please. Um, well, there it is. I'll ask you a question, actually, Danielle, because I wonder if this, this is something that I, I noticed when I started doing more video and I assume that you've been famous. Yeah, you've been on TV, you've been on shows, you've been recording all that stuff for your whole life, probably. Did you, do you find it or did you ever find a situation where you had a view of something that happened and then you went back and watched it later and went, that's totally not how I saw that going down or that's not what I thought I said. I thought I said something different, but when you look at the video, you actually see that, that, that the situation was different than you thought. No, I, my recall's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. But tell me where you were going with that. No, it's just, again, it was more about that 
it's again about the perception of what you think. I never the, found it proof the truth that I can't is. remember things when I'm angry. Yeah. And I theorize it, but I've never and witnessed that, that, that my perception when I'm furious is different than, than lighter. But I, I know that human beings experience that. And I actually, I'd, I'd welcome a chance to be confronted with, yeah. with being... That's interesting, because like I'll watch reality TV yeah. and then people will go, Oh, but I did this and I did that. And we're like, but we saw the video. We know what you did. Oh, but that's, that's a memory I'm problem. Yeah. Them. But, and I know it's got production and whatever behind it. I was yeah. slightly cursed with an accurate memory. Right. So we're still, yeah, because it, most people have, so it's, it's memories. It's not static. Memory is always evolving. Every right? time you, um, every time you reference it, you change it. Have you heard yeah. about that? That's true. Yeah. 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 Every time you call it. I'm careful not to remember some things very often so that when I can remember them, they feel fresh. That they build. And, and I let like, label them. Yeah. 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 No, it's interesting. I, suck I, on like suck on some really cute memories from back in the day. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for your cars. No, this was a spur of the moment <laughs> conversation, and this was amazing. So thank you, Daniel. Thank you, David. <laughs> thank you very much. That was awesome. Thank so you. Really. Creatives with AI is a proud member of the AI Podcast Network. To stay up to date with current episodes and show information, subscribe to their newsletter at podcastnetwork.ai. And don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast platform so you'll always get the episodes as soon as they're available. Thanks again for listening and stay curious. curious. curious.